Okay, welcome everybody to the 2023 Conservation and Environmental Awareness Speaking Contest. Um, and thank you for coming out today and to all of the speakers who are participating tonight. Um, we will have, um, there's an order in the brochure here or the program. So we have six speakers today. We have Ellie Thompson first with Wisconsin Lakes and Climate Change, a steamy relationship. Second, we will have Anna Lynn Boos, Invasive Plant Species. Third, we will have Peyton Wagner with Water Pollution. Fourth, we will have Katie Butman with Erosion Got Big. And fifth, we will have Delilah Solberg, Migratory Birds, The Ball is in Our Court. And for the sixth one, we will have Charlie Thompson, Runoff's Impact on Soil Health and Agricultural Productivity. We have two divisions tonight, so the first five are going to be the elementary division, and those speeches will have a time limit of three to five minutes, and that will be timed. Um, we will not stop you, so just keep going however long you need to go, but it is a three to five minute, so just be aware of that. Um, for the senior division, we have Charlie speaking on that one, and with that, the time limit is five to seven minutes. Um, we have three judges tonight, and those are the three sitting over there, and I'll let them introduce themselves. Hi, everyone. I'm Charmaine Anderson, and I'm the county conservationist. My name is Greta Munson, and I'm the Blair Taylor Ag teacher. Hello, I am Kellen Nelson. I serve on the county board from District 14 and chair the Environment and Land Use Committee. Perfect. So the judges will be judging the um, speeches on a variety of things. And at the end, the judges may ask the speakers a few questions at the very end of your speech. So make sure to stay up here if they have any questions that you can answer. Um, we do have a few prizes tonight for the first, second, and third of each division. We have the trophies, medals, and then we do have a monetary award for you guys. So please don't leave until you are completely done and we have handed out awards. We will have photos at the end, um, so you guys can have all of those taken at the end as well. Um, a reminder is that the biggest thing we are here tonight is to get you guys engaged in public speaking and spread the um, awareness of conservation. So I give you guys all a round of applause just for standing up here tonight and being strong enough to get up here and do that. So please give them a round of applause just for getting up here. <laughs> it's a big feat to do and I'm you know, shaking up here as I speak. So I give you guys credit um, for getting up here. So with that, um, we will take a, we'll start the speeches. After all the speeches have been completed, we will take a short break so that the judges can tally all of the totals. And then we'll come back in. Actually, the judges will come back in. We'll send those out. And then we will do awards and pictures after that. Um, so with that, we will get started with the elementary division and Ellie Thompson you are up first okay <laughs> My name is Ellie Thompson, and I, and I am a fifth grade student at Ettrick Elementary. The title of my speech is Wisconsin Lakes and Climate Change, a Steamy Relationship. Welcome, viewers, to the TCC channel. I'm Ellie Thompson, host of Trumple County's very own dating show, Cooley Romance. On the show today, we will hear from two local residents who went on a blind date to see if they were a perfect match. Please welcome Mr. Climate Change and Miss Waterbody. So, Miss Waterbody, in your opinion, how did the date go? At first it was going well, but then it started getting warm and steamy. So right after the date, I contacted Sarah Hatley, biologist from Taylor, Wisconsin, who owns Aquatic Plants and Habitat Services. 
and she said it's bad that I'm heating up. An increase in water temperature will kill some invertebrates, which will affect the fish that eat them. I really care about that stuff. That's a tough way to start a date. Well, Mr. Climate Change, this sounds pretty serious. Why would you heat up Miss Waterbody knowing the damage it would do to her ecosystem? I did that because of the way people treat me. For example, according to Charmaine Anderson, a Trumbull County conservationist, people are polluting me by releasing greenhouse gases into the air. According to the EPA.gov website, the main causes of greenhouse gases are residential and commercial energy use, which include businesses and homes, industry, transportation, and agriculture, which is from livestock and crop production. Humans sure do make it hard for me to find love. It doesn't sound like it's going too well for you two. Hang in there, Miss Waterbody. I have a plan. Sarah Hatlily says that some things we can do to help stop humans from bullying Mr. Climate Change in our everyday lives is that we should try not to use so much gasoline, try to group our trips more often, and use energy more efficiently. Another thing that we can do to help is try to reduce waste. But if you can't reduce, reuse. If you can't reuse, then recycle. That would sure make Miss Waterbody happy. According to Haley Paso, a conservation engineering specialist in Trumplo County, some of the climate change is happening from pollution. Some things that are currently being done to start making Mr. Climate Change more likable, according to Sarah Hatlily, are that people are trying to produce less waste and practice smarter uses of energy, things we can all work on in our daily, or in this case, dating lives. Miss Waterbody, now that you've gotten to know him, what would you like to say to Mr. Climate Change? Mr. Climate Change, it is important to me to make sure you are, are nice to everyone you meet because you are affecting the lakes and the animals that live in the lakes. You are also causing rainfall to come down in bigger portions, leading to flooding that picks up dirt and pollution. Then all that goes into lakes and pollutes them and the fish habitats. Also, according to BASF.com, it is important to think about the energy we use every day. Thank you, Miss Waterbody. Here we are. We've heard about why the date didn't work out, what qualities Miss Waterbody looks for in a partner, and the things that can be done to help Mr. Climate Change get back into the dating pool. This match might not have worked out, but now we know some things to do to help stop the giant effect that climate change does to Wisconsin Lakes. On our next episode, we'll try not to use so much gasoline and reduce the amount of energy we use every day to make our show. Thank you. Tune in to Cooley Romance next time. Not so much a question, but uh, uh, I think that could be a really entertaining show to have on TCC, so we can get Kevin to talk to you about that. We're always looking for content. Good job, though. Thanks. What made you decide to have it be a relationship kind of um, idea? I w so Miss Genther was kind of helping me with this, so we were, we were trying to think of something creative, and that was one of the things that we thought of. Okay, and up next we have Annalyn Boos. Come on up. Bus, Bus sorry. <laughs> no, my bad. <clears throat> the Invasive Invasion. Hello, I'm Annalyn Bus. I'm in fifth grade at Edge Elementary. One of the things that makes Trimple County a great place to live and visit is the lakes and the Mississippi River. However, the native species in these bodies are, of water are being harmed by invasive species. And the three that are causing the most harm to our county are the curly leaf pondweed, the Eurasian water milfoil, and last but not least, the zebra mussel. First of all, according to the DNR, the curly leaf pondweed is in many of Trample County's bodies of water, eight to be exact. They are reddish green with about three inch long stems three inch long leaves and about one to three feet long stems. 
They are only native to Africa, Australia, and Eurasia. The big problem that curly leaf pondweed causes is it takes over the, natives, over na the native species. Another invasive species is the Eurasian watermill quail. It is in four lakes in Trempolo County and 400 in Wisconsin. They have slender stems with feather-like leaves. The Eurasian water milfoil is native to Europe, Asia, and Northern Africa, and is the only non-native milfoil in Wisconsin. The problem is that it makes it so that not much sunlight can get through, so other plant species will die. The last invasive species I'm going to talk about today is the zebra mussel. Zebra mussels are found in two bodies of water in Chempelo County. They have a yellow or brown D-shaped shell with alternating dark and light stripes. They can grow up to two inches, but are usually under an inch. They are native to Asia and Europe. The problem is that zebra mussels clog the filters on boats and break boat engines. I talked to Sarah Hatlily, a biologist from Taylor, Wisconsin, and owner of Aquatic Plant and Habitat Species, about what can be done to solve the problem that, that zebra mussels are causing. Unfortunately, she said zebra mussels cannot be controlled. All we can do to try is try to prevent the spread of them. How we can help stop the spread is to wash our boats before we go to a different body of water. And don't bring water from one body of water to another. Sarah Hatlily says that the curly leaf pondweed is really expensive to control. And because it is so thick, it causes problems with boating and swimming. She also says the Eurasian water milfoil can be controlled by herbicides. But the problem she is finding is the... Is the Eurasian water milfoil is crossbreeding with the native milfoil, and the cross red one is resisting the herbicides. In conclusion, I have found that one of the best ways to c control invasive species is not to bring them to Wisconsin, because we don't know the effect it can have on the natural species. Let's work together to keep these bodies of water in Tremplow County one of the best futures. features. I'm Anna Lombus, and thank you for your time. Um, what are some, what is a way that um, a student, fifth grade students could do to help reduce invasive species? Um, we could like put up posters around and just make sure people are aware of what's happening. Okay, up next we have Peyton Wagner. Come on up. Hi, my name is Peyton Wagner. I am a fifth grader from Etchick Elementary. Water pollution. Imagine you've been outside Picture yourself outside on a hot summer day, and all you want is an ice-cold glass of water. I offer you a glass, but it's polluted. Would you risk drinking that water? Well, let me tell you about water pollution, how it can affect us, and what can be done to solve this problem. First of all, non-point source NPS pollution is also known as polluted runoff. It is one of the biggest water pollution, is one of the source of water pollution. According to the DNR website, causes of runoff include fertilizers, nutrients, oil, and grease. This comes from urban farming and residential areas. One quart of spilled motor oil equals 250,000 gallons of polluted water. Another source of pollution is PFAS. According to the, health, according to the Department of Health of Wisconsin, PFAS can affect your health. There are chemicals that been, have been been used in many products, including things like cleaning products, shampoo, eye makeup, nail polish, water-resistant fabric like umbrellas and raincoats, and non-stick cookware. PFOs are also known as for, for as forever chemicals because they do not break down in the environment.
According to the DHS, you can be exposed to PFAS from drinking water, eating fish with high level of PFAS, eating food that was packaged in material made with PFAS, and, and to using nonstick cooker to cook your food. Some health issues from PFAS include birth defects, thyroid problems, and decreased fertility in women. But scientists are still learning about of still learning about how PFAS affect us. Have you heard about lead? According to cleanwisconsin.org, there was no safe level of exposure. Of lead exposure. Lead can have long-lasting impacts on our health. Wisconsin, wait. A map of Wisconsin service lines with lead shows an estimate of 2,000 lines in Trumbull County alone. Clean Wisconsin state that Lead is extremely toxic, especially in our drinking water, and can cause decreased attention span, learning disabilities, and hearing problems, and problems with blood cells. According to CleanWisconsin.org, according to Clean Wisconsin, Wisconsin ranks tenth in the whole country for kids for the number of kids the number of kids with lead poisoning. It is difficult to detect in your drinking water because it is colorless and orderless. There sure things like a big problem, so how can we help? Don't spill oil on the ground and maintain your vehicles so they don't leak into the environment. Use less salt on the roads and walkways because if it rains, it could run to the storm drains and get into our rivers, lakes, and groundwater. When you buy everyday items, make sure they do not have PFAS in them. You should, re- you should reduce if your use of plastic and recycle what you can. Don't litter because if it rains and floods, that garbage can be washed into our waterways and into lakes and rivers, causing harm to the environment and our animals. You can volunteer to help with this by joining the Water Action Volunteer Wave Program that Trumplow County is part of. Farmers do a lot to help us put food on our tables. They can also help the environment and themselves, even if they use buffers to help prevent runoff and soil erosion. According to Trumple County Land Conservation Department, buffers are areas of vegetation between their fields and that help help filter out sediment and nutrients that can come off the crops, according to Trumple County Land Conservation. Department. They can also use waterways, which help with runoff too. It's important to solve water pollution in Wisconsin and Chumpla County because every living thing needs water to survive. If the water we need is polluted, we can become sick or even die. It is very important to test your drinking water if you have water from a well for things like lead and nitrates and PFAS to make sure your water is safe and you don't get sick. Water pollution can, can affect us and the environment. You've heard about some of the scary things that can be in your drinking water. Why they can be bad and how to prevent them from happening. Now that you know a little bit more about water pollution, do you really want to risk drinking that cold glass of polluted water off of you? Give a hoot, don't pollute. Yeah. yeah, we're all sitting here trying to figure out what we can ask her, but there's a lot of information. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know where we can get our water tested? No. No? So there is a program here in Trumple County that we will do cost sharing on, on water tests. So that's one way that we can help out with that. It's pretty cool. It goes to Dairy Lynn Lab.
Great job. Okay, up next is going to be Katie Buckman. Come on up. Hi, my name is Katie Butman, and I'm in fifth grade at Chico Elementary. Today I will be informing you about the topic of erosion in Trumpel County. Now you might be wondering, what are the types of erosion in Trumpel County? Well, to answer your question, according to Reed Lally, who is the Parks and Environmental Specialist for Trumpel County, the three most common types of erosion in our area are rill and gully erosion in the hills, sheet erosion on the flatter areas, and finally, stream bank erosion. All three types of erosion are often caused by the movement of water from heavy rains and snowmelt. Erosion causes several problems, including the removal of topsoil, which contain nutrients crops need to grow, and the ability to store water. Healthy soil is important to farmers and others whose jobs depend on it. Preventing erosion is especially important to me because I'm the fifth generation I'm the fourth generation on our family farm, and I want to make sure that we have good soil for many years to come. According to worldwildlife.org, the effects of soil erosion go beyond the loss of fertile land. It has led to an increase in, po in pollution and sedimentation in streams and rivers. This buildup decreases water flow and increases water temperature. This can result in a decline of fish that rely on the constant water flow and temperature for their eggs and fry. Reed Lally mentioned the land is at a higher risk for erosion when bare soil is exposed. Now you might be wondering, how do we prevent erosion or fix it? My grandparents on both sides of my family have been using methods like no-till farming and contour strip cropping to prevent or minimize erosion on their land for decades. According to the USDA and no-till articulture, the farmer uses a no-till planter to create a small hole just large enough for the seed to be placed. By not plowing or disking, the cover crop residue remains on the surface protecting the soil from erosion and moisture loss. According to Trempeau County Land Conservation, contour strip cropping is planting staggered strips of row crops on a contour. Farmers then alternate the strips in a crop rotation system. In fact, both of my grandparents alternate corn, soybeans, and alfalfa. The strip of soil between crops serves as a break in the, move, in the movement of water and wind. According to Haley Passow, another way to prevent erosion is to plant grasses or a winter cover crop like rye or other small grains. My relatives over by Trumple use this method to prevent sheet erosion on their fields. On our farm last year, we had a stream bank project done. The stream ran crooked and high water from heavy rains and snowmelt cut the stream banks into the field. We applied for county assessments through the watershed program. First, the stream bank was shaped and then we put a lot of riprap on the curves of the stream bank. According to my grandfather, Russell Butman, it is a great program to save the value of our soil. In conclusion, we learned that rill and sheet Rill, sheet, and stream bank erosion are the three most common types of erosion in Trempeau County. And we discussed some of the problems caused by them. Controlling erosion can benefit future generations like me. My name is Katie Butman. I'm in fifth grade at Chico Elementary. Thank you. No, it was really well done. I enjoyed the context of how your family has employed different practices on your farm. It uh, hits home with most of us here. And so, uh, a very nice job. Thank you. Uh, okay, and last up for the elementary division is going to be De Delilah Solberg. Come on up.
put it down? Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's okay. I need it too. Okay. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. Hi, my name is Delilah Solberg. I am in fifth grade at Ettrick Elementary, and the title of my speech is Migratory Birds, The Ball is in Our Court. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Birds vs. the Environment Wisconsin State Basketball Championship. I'm your host, Delilah, here, and to kick things off, I'm going to tell you all about the Birds team. Now, this is not just any normal flock. These are some of the migrating birds of Wisconsin who move to another region or habitat according to the seasons. Let's start with Wisconsin Migrating Birds starting lineup. First, we have the Sandhill Crane. It migrates to Florida to spend its winter months and then migrates back to Wisconsin in March. Next, we have the Blue Jay, who goes south in the winter and returns to Wisconsin in April. Third, we have the Ruby-Throated Hummingbird. It migrates to Central America and returns to Wisconsin at the end of April. Lastly is the Tundra Swan. It doesn't live in Wisconsin, but stops here to rest on its way out west. Now for the environment starting lineup. Their players include windows, habitat loss, cats, and climate change, which can be a threat to these birds on and off the court. Good luck to both teams, but an extra piece of good luck for the migrating birds. They have to win tonight for the Wisconsin fans because they play a big part in the health of Wisconsin's ecosystem. It's time to start the game. The referee throws up the ball. Whoosh! The Sandhill Crane tips it right to the bl Blue Jay. She runs down the court. Boom! She hits window straight on and falls down, unable to continue her journey to the hoop. Well, folks, we're going to take a quick break while the coaches, a.k.a. experts, help Blue Jay up. Let me explain what happened. According to WPR.org, windows are a big threat to the bird population, killing over 599 million birds each year. Okay, Blue Jay is back in the game. Habitat loss is bringing the ball up the court. She is not giving the birds much space to rest. She dribbles in for the layup. She makes it. Wow, habitat loss is a problem because it's not providing enough habitat for the birds when they are trying to migrate. According to Retuners.com, habitat loss became a problem because of human activities. The ruby-throated hummingbird brings up the ball. She gets into the lane, but the cat catches her, steals the ball, heads down the court, she shoots, and she scores. Cats are the biggest problem, killing 2.4 billion birds each year. The ruby-throated hummingbird brings up the ball again. Climate change is meeting her right at half court, slowing her down and making it harder for her to get into the lane. She tries to pass the tundra swan, but climate change steals the pass and runs down the court. She goes in for the layup and misses. That's a relief for the birds. Now the birds' coaches call a timeout. So let's talk about the problem of climate change. Climate change is causing a problem in bird migration because it can make snowfall come during the migration season and makes it hard for the birds who are flying. Let's listen in on the birds huddle to see what the four coaches are telling them. Coach Haley Paso, a conservation engineering specialist in Trempolo County, is speaking to the birds now. What we have to do to stop windows is put something in front of them so we see we need to stay clear of that area. Now the coach from OurEndangeredWorld.com gives her advice. To stop habitat loss, all these people here could plant trees in their backyards. Coach blog.nwf.org is chiming in. To stop cats from catching birds, we can keep cats inside as much as possible. Finally, Coach Sarah Hatlily, biologist and owner of Aquatic Plants and Habitat Services in Taylor, Wisconsin, is giving her advice. To stop climate change, we need to reduce waste, reuse items, and recycle. One, two, three, birds! We're back, and let's remember, these birds have to win tonight because they play a key role in the health of Wisconsin's ecosystem. They need to be protected when migrating because they are seed distributors for many plants, especially native Wisconsin plants. They are also predators for to insects, rodents, and small animals. That's important because we need to keep those populations in check. According to TravisAudubon.org, birds are also important because bird studies help us scientifically. They teach us about climate and the environment. Also, according to 3billionbirds.com, birds are good for the economy. Bird watching generates $100 billion in economic impacts. Let's finish the game. The environment will start with the ball. 
Windows dribbles down the court. Then the Sandhill Crane steals the ball, runs down the court, and makes the shot. Thanks to the help of our environmental experts and people like you and me, birds make basket after basket and win the game. Congratulations to the birds. They knew they had to win because they are so important to Wisconsin. I'm Delilah Solberg, the host of Birds vs. the Environment Wisconsin State Basketball Championship, signing out. Thank you. Okay, that concludes for the elementary division. We are now on to the senior division with Charlie Thompson. Come on up. If, ag if agriculture goes wrong, nothing else will have a chance to go right. M.S. Swamithan. For, uh, for all of us, farming provides nourishment, nourishment for many farmer. For many, farming is their livelihood. Our lives depend on our state's farm, and it is, and it is to every Wisconsin citizen's benefit that Wisconsin agriculture practices our success, our success while minimizing harmful side effects. If agriculture goes wrong, nothing else will have the chance to go right. Of course, farming is not without its challenges, one of those being runoff. Today, I would like to discuss agriculture runoff in our state of Wisconsin. How is our state affected by it, and how can we reduce its effects and maintain a healthy agriculture future for Wisconsin? Runoff is caused when soil is unable to absorb any more water, and what is not absorbed by the soil is left to run off and ultimately find its way into our waterways and even in our groundwater. Why should we have, be concerned about the effects of agriculture runoff? For one, our drinking water is affected, according to the Wisconsin DR. Nitrogen and harmful chem bacteria are two main p pollutants from farms and livestock operations. Those with groundwater polluted by runoff may find themselves unable to safely drink their well water. According to Publishing Environmental Work Group, Nitrate in, is Wisconsin's most widespread groundwater containment. Most of its nitrate population, pop, pollution, more than 90% comes from agriculture sources. Nitrates in water can cause illness. A recent, a recent analysis by EWG and Clean Wisconsin found direct medical costs for nitrate contamination of Wisconsin's drinking water range from $2 million to $80 million per year. We depend on clean drinking water to live. We must not sacrifice safe drinking water in the process of farming. Even our, li our large bodies of water are being ne negatively affected. According to the Environmental Working Group in the Midwest Environmental Advocates, more than 15,000 miles of Wisconsin streams and rivers and 33 lakes have impaired waters due to combined pollution from manure and commercial fertilizers. When manure, fertilizers, and sediments find its way into our lakes and streams and rivers, 
the excess nutrients contained in the runoff can increase plant growth, make algae bloom, and lower oxygen levels in the water. This can have a devastating effect on, its hab on the habitats that call our Wisconsin waterways home. A new investigation by the Environmental Working Group and Midwest Environmental Advocates finds that in nine Wisconsin counties, commercial fertilizer and animal manure are overlapping farmland at rates that cause that are causing a water pollution crisis in rural Wisconsin. Runoff also has a terrible effect on the farm itself. Excess runoff will strip fields of the necessary nutrients to produce a quality product. When the topsoil is washed away, it takes it takes it with it. The beneficial organic matter needed for a quality crop, low quality soil can lead to loss of crops, low quality crops, and ultimately a farmer's livelihood if not corrected. Thankfully, there are ways to minimize agriculture runoff. Wisconsin is involved in development and implementation of nutrient reduction strategies, according to the EPA. Wisconsin, the Wisconsin Department of Agriculture suggests that farmers use a free online tool called the Runoff Risk Advisory Forecast to identify if there's a high or low change of runoff in your area. Farmers can plant cover crops to increase water retention in the soil year round. Cover crops as a filter and slow the rate of water flow. No-till planting is another excellent, excellent practice that minimally disrupts the soil and this results in less runoff from planting. According to a 12-year study published by the Journal of Environmental Quality on Constructed Wetlands, a small wetland of around 6% of the tile-drained agriculture area can reduce nitrogen by nearly 50%. Wetlands plants absorb some of the nutrients and microbes convert some into nitrogen gas and interet non-greenhouse gas. Imagine the positive impact of nearly half, half reduction in nitrogen, which reaches our waterways via agriculture runoff. Agriculture runoff is a serious issue facing our state. It affects our scene and our contaminated water wells in rural Wisconsin homesteads. Our lakes have become overgrown with toxic algae blooms and affected the quality of our fish habitats. Runoff is affecting our farmers, their products, and their pocketbooks. The FFA creed reads, I believe in the future of agriculture with a faith born not of words, but of deeds. I do believe that the future of agriculture can be successful. One with the help and inflation of conserva conservative farming practices to lessen the effects of agriculture runoff. It is important that farmers and non-farmers alike respect the needs of our precious farmlands and waterways and for all of us to protect them for not only ourselves but for future generations. Luke chapter 12 verse 48, to whom much is given much will be required. We have been given much, we have been given much and it is required we care for the land. If agriculture gets this right Everything else has the chance to go right to. Not a question, but a comment. I agree with your paper a lot. Like, that's a really important thing that a lot of people need to learn and know that agriculture is the basis of everything. And if we can get it right, then we do have a little bit of hope. So I agree with you. Good job. Thank you. Move it down. <laughs> 
Okay, and with that, we conclude all the speeches for tonight. We will let the judges deliberate, and I will call them back in here shortly as they finish up their deliberations. We will send them into TV studio so that we can get those deliberated so you guys have a little bit of time to mosey about, talk about yourselves, talk amongst yourselves. There we go. Um, you can talk about yourselves too. I don't really care. Um, and then we will come back in and we will go with awards. So thank you guys. Um, so we'll start with the elementary division first. Well, we'll start with third place is going to be Ellie Thompson. like doing <laughs> and then third there you are and then we can kind of mosey eventually we'll get photos on that other end okay. so, <laughs> so where should I go? you can mosey that way <laughs> great job <laughs> okay second place is going to be delilah solberg come on up Hang on to. <laughs> Great job. Okay, and first place is Katie Butman. There we are. Thank you. Okay, and then Anna Lynn Buss and Peyton Wagner can come on up. We have certificates and the medals for you guys. Great job. Let's give a huge round of applause for elementary division. Go ahead, Mark. Okay, and senior division with one contestant, we have Charlie Thompson in first place. Come on up. <laughs> but great job. It was an awesome speech. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. And before you guys leave, I do have comments for you, but we'll take some pictures first. Um, and then parents, grandparents can all get their pictures and we can go from there. So thank you everybody for coming out tonight. Um, so now it's just pictures and wrapping up here. So I just want to say again, thank you and congratulations to all the students. You did amazingly. I am just amazed at how well you guys did tonight. Um, congratulations. And I'm so proud of each and every one of you.